But the thing nobody ever tells you when you have a lot of gear is, uh, is Savannah and I share a gear closet, but that being said, uh, we do have separate sections within the gear closet. Let me show you my sections. My section, my section, my section. The, the overall theme with all of those sections, it, they're all completely messy and they're almost always, always messy. And the big part is I'll come in here and like need something and I'll just, I'll just grab something and then when I'm done with it, then I'll throw it back in here. Today, I think, uh, I think I'm gonna clean up this side of the closet. Also, all of the batteries that I ever need charged, like this this camera Sony battery is right here. Uh, and if, if the one thing that I would recommend that everybody does is have a charging wall like this, where all of your gear's batteries can just charge in one central location, like the drum batteries are right there, charging. Nan lives, these are flash batteries. These are batteries for the Canon. It's not very hard to do. And I think we got all this stuff from, from Lowe's or Home Depot and did it like in an afternoon. I think I'm on like day nine of marathon training. Probably do 10 just to make it even. So because it's nine miles and I don't really want to run, like have it be a boring one or a look of stuff, I think I'm gonna go downtown, go around the gulch, and then go finish the last little bit on the river. Most of running is finding ways to keep your brain busy so you're not focused on the fact that you're running and you just wanna stop. Look at this runner behind me. Like a walking traffic cone. If you watched yesterday's video, you might remember these steps. I feel like for most people that like cameras, like video or photo, the ultimate goal is to have a lot of gear that you can, uh, that you have at your disposal. But the thing nobody ever tells you when you have a lot of gear is, uh, is, is what to do with it all when you're not using it. If I'm being completely honest, I don't really use half the gear that we have, and it just becomes mostly a, mostly a nuisance. Also, I don't think I've ever been on this street downtown. Don't get me wrong, I love having gear. It's just, it requires management, which sucks. Now, I'm entering the gulch. Look at this thing. Do you see that? It's like a golf cart, but uh, <laughs> what is that? One thing that I've learned with running longer distances is to really pull back on the downhills because naturally, at least for me, I really want to just sprint down the hill because it's a lot easier. If you like pull back, you save energy, your heart rate goes down and you can push harder on the uphills or the flat areas. Technically, this is another another section of downtown Nashville. This is called Capital View, but I just consider it a part of the gold because it's basically the same thing. If I'm being completely honest, there was another reason besides like entertainment on why I chose my running route. I mostly chose it because I knew exactly halfway, which is five miles halfway, end of the run there would be a, a working water fountain and a restroom all right back to the run and just like that back in Germantown I have four miles left. The the run was was good. Towards the end, it was a it was kind of a, a struggle just to keep going. But I mean, it's I feel like this that's how every every long run is. The the last like hundred feet is just. Uh. When you do something for a long period of time or any kind of length of time, you start to acquire, uh, some people call it junk and other people call it uh, gear that they may use in the future.
A perfect example of this would be what's behind this door right here. You may or may not know this, but before I did video, I was a drummer for, for years, like 15 years plus. And because of that, the entire upper half of the storage unit, you see all of that up there, and then behind that, that's all gear. And uh, do I use any of it? Sometimes, but 90% of it, I don't touch. So because of that, uh, storage and how to store gear properly becomes a really important thing uh, by, as a byproduct of just collecting all. Now, if you go back and watch any kind of, any influencer's uh, gear closet tour, like Peter McKinnon or Matt Hapoy, if you watch their videos like from year to year consecutively, you'll notice that they'll completely change. Sometimes they'll go from a big storage locker to a small little cabinet thing. And because of that, I don't think there's any perfect or one like size fits all solution to store gear. I just think it depends on the season season that you're in. Sometimes there are seasons where a gear closet for us makes sense. And then there are other seasons where just a simple backpack with items that we need uh, just, just makes sense. Basically what I'm trying to get at here is uh, I think we put too much pressure on gear closets and how to store gear. And in the grand scheme of things, I don't think it really matters. I just think you just need to find temporary solutions that work for you today and just leave it leave it at that. Like focus more energy on creating things and shooting things and having more ambitious goals. Focus the energy on that, not how you're gonna store that 70 to 200 that you dropped off of a, a monopod onto concrete and still haven't got it fixed. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that was me. I, I dropped our 70 to 200 off of a monopod and it landed face down on, on the concrete. Do you think the, what? I realize I incorporate coffee a lot in this vlog and it's not, I don't try to do that. I just, I drink a lot of coffee and a byproduct of that, I guess, is incorporated it a lot in the vlog.